What is up, my internet friends and family? I am Charmix, and today I'm gonna be reacting to 10 most inappropriate messages in kids' shows. So, if you're a kid watching this, you might not actually want to watch this, as it might ruin the kids' show for you. But with that being said, the original link's in the description, and let's begin! SpongeBob SquarePants is a funny show of nautical puns, annoyingly high-pitched laughter, and rape jokes? In the episode what? Gary Takes a Bath, SpongeBob and his pet snail Gary are imagining themselves as pirates looking for treasure. SpongeBob finds some bars of soap and pretends that they're gold doubloons. As he hands them over to Gary, he says, don't drop them, and gives a cautionary wink. To kids, <laughs> this just seems like an innocent warning about losing imaginary gold. But this is, wow. in fact, a reference to prison rape. As the legend goes, if one were to drop soap in a prison's community shower, they would have to bend over to retrieve it, while allowing another inmate to, well, you know. This episode was banned in the UK and Australia on three separate occasions because of the off-color comedy. Some people will give kudos to the writer for slipping in these kinds of jokes, but I just find it disturbing. It is pretty disturbing. The main antagonist of the 2001 animated hit Shrek was Lord Farquaad, whose no. name was purposely made to sound like Farquaad. There's a scene where the little Farquaad. Farquaad was sitting upright and naked in his bed while drinking an alcoholic beverage. He then demands that the magic mirror show him a picture of Princess Fiona. With an apprehensive grimace, the mirror pulls up a photo of the princess. As Farquaad says, ah, perfect, a very subtle movement can be seen underneath the sheets where his crotch is located. Realizing he's getting a little too excited, he quickly pulls up the bed sheets to cover up his growing erection. There's oh no doubt about it, there's definitely some movement under those sheets. He then looks back at the mirror, embarrassed. Visible erections in a kid's movie? What a little prick. <gasps> Oh my. Disney's Frozen was an instant smash hit. It had kids across the world singing Let It Go and had parents clamoring to the toy stores looking for that latest Elsa doll. But there's a part in that movie that has adults snickering to themselves as the kids looked on in confusion. When Anna's talking to Kristoff about the man she married on a whim, he's rightfully skeptical about her knowledge of her newfound fiance. So he rattles off a bunch of questions to quiz her. After asking about his eyes and last name, he then slyly inquires about his foot size. Anna quickly replies, foot size doesn't matter, and looks off to the side, scoffing at the idea. Asking about a man's foot size alludes to the size of a man's penis. When yep. Anna replies, size doesn't matter, the young princess is either extremely naive, or she's implying that it's not the size of the boat, it's the motion in the ocean. Of all the entries on the list, this one is the most blatant example of sneaking sex into a kid's film. The Rescuers was a 1977 animated film dealing with kidnapping victims and the mouse organization hired to help them. These pint-sized detectives travel the world on the back of an albatross, trying to rescue an orphan girl from the middle of the Devil's Bayou. Wow, what a charming and enduring story of heroism. Well, it would be if the production team didn't intentionally put a picture of a bare-chested lady right in the movie. As Where? the mice are flying on the back of a bird strapped inside of a sardine can, in the background there is a totally topless woman standing in the window. <laughs> For 22 years, the pornographic image went undetected. Then, in 1999, Disney issued a recall on all copies of the film. They claimed that it was added in post-production by a company not affiliated with them. Disney said sure. the aim of the recall was to keep its promise to families that they can trust and rely on the Disney brand to provide the best in family entertainment. Looks like the only thing Disney's providing is the best boobs in the business. Ah, oh, look at those cute little penguins, tapping their little toes and practicing their sex positions. Uh, wait, what? Yep, you heard right. These penguins get down and dirty right in front of you, and your kids were none the wiser. In one scene, Gloria pops out of the water and then slides down across the ice. Well, wouldn't you know it, old clumsy Mumbles flies out of the water and hilariously lands on top of Gloria. Oh. As they slip and slide around each other, they find themselves in some pretty unfortunate positions. What follows is a cavalcade of Kama Sutra. They are are pretty much doing several erotic sex positions, which to the kids looks like innocent floundering accidents. I'm not sure how two penguins in the 69 position and then into the doggy style got approved for a PG rating. I guess Mumble's feet aren't the only thing that he'll be tapping tonight. 
Wacko, Yakko, and Dot are the Animaniacs. This was a show that aired between the mid to late 90s. Steven Spielberg was the executive producer. It was a huge hit with the kids as well really? as adults, garnering about 1 million viewers every week. Intended to be a children's show, sometimes they would go a little bit too far with the sexual innuendo. In the most extreme instance, while the main characters are trying to solve a crime, Yakko tells Dot to dust for Prince. She returns with the pop musical sensation, Prince. Yakko tells her, no, 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 fingerprints. Dot and Prince share an awkward glance before she says, I don't think so. The joke is that she misheard the instructions as fingerprints. This naughty oh. double entendre was never recalled or edited <laughs> out. Even the creators of the show don't know how it managed to get past the censors. I have no idea how. Cow and Chicken was an American animated comedy series on the Cartoon Network from 1997 to 99. It featured anthropomorphic animals, humanoid figures that ate with their feet, and a naked red dude that was literally the cartoon embodiment of Satan. And needless to say, this show had a lot going on. But when they aired the episode Buffalo Gals, the proverbial crap hit the fan. A bunch of manly looking women storm into the house, immediately get on their hands and knees, and start chewing on the floor. The mother then explains that they are the Buffalo Gals a motorcycle riding gang that randomly bursts into people's homes and chews on their carpet. The term carpet muncher is a derogatory <laughs> oh slang my. for lesbians, referencing the act of gay oral sex. One of the bikers is even named Munch Kelly. Later on in the same episode, they sing about coming out, which could also mean coming out of the closet. When they made this episode, it was like the creators were trying to get their show canceled on purpose. Once the censors found out about the over-the-top innuendo, the episode was instantly banned and now can only be found in the deepest annals of the Internet. The That's computer crazy. animated comedy Madagascar was released in 2005. It's the story of animals who live in the Central Park Zoo, but are accidentally shipped off to the titular island nation. In the movie, two of the main characters, Alex the Lion and Marty the Zebra, reunite on the beach. Alex is very angry about the entire situation and begins to chase Marty. The zebra then runs away in slow motion. He turns around exclaiming, oh, sugar honey iced tea. Some kids may think that this is some sort of cartoon colloquialism, but observant adults will take a look at the first letters of each word. It's evident that the zany <laughs> zebra is shouting out an alternate phrase oh, to shit. Oh, shit. Although Sugar Honey Iced Tea sounds like a refreshing summer drink, kids should think twice before asking for it at dinner time. Chowder was one of those weird cartoons where you either loved it or you hated it. The Cartoon Network series lasted for 49 episodes from 2007 to 2010. It follows the misadventures of a young chef apprentice named Chowder and his daily exploits under the ever absent-minded culinary coach, Mong Dao. In one episode, Mong and his floating mushroom fairy wife, Truffles, are in the kitchen standing next to Chowder. Truffles says, I think it's time to get cooking, and then kisses Mong on the cheek. He blushes, smiles, and his already elongated it knows perks up and shakes like an erect penis. They walk off into another room, presumably to have sex, while Chowder says, hey guys, where you going? The kitchen is in here. Seeing as how the age demographic for the show was 7 to 12, curious kids were more than likely asking their parents why they left the kitchen to go cook. Nickelodeon cartoons in the 90s were totally awesome. Rocco's Modern Life, Doug and Ren and Stimpy instantly come to mind, but the reigning king of ratings was undoubtedly Rugrats. The day-to-day -day adventures of Tommy, Chucky, Phil, Lil, and Angelica kept kids from ages 2 to 11 coming back each week. Every now and then, they would throw a couple of adult jokes in there that flew way over the young viewers' heads. In one episode, the Rugrats' grandpa rents some movies from the local video store. Two of the tapes are age-appropriate films starring the kid's favorite dinosaur, Reptar. The Is last one, his grandpa Grandpa's personal favorite, the adult fantasy film, Lonely Space Fixes. <laughs> Grandpa gives out a little giggle yeah. and then says, that's for after you go to bed. The film is obviously a porno, so needless to say, once Tommy and Chucky are innocently tucked away under the covers, Grandpa will be in the next room gawking at bare naked alien booty. My goodness. What the hell were some of these animators thinking when they made this? Like, seriously. Oh, my childhood just gets more ruined every single day. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. This is very interesting, and if you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. Possibly share it with a friend. If you do, subscribe to the family today. And with that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Boop!